bowling. <laughs> bowling. Yesterday when I watched the debate, I'm going to talk about the debate today. Oh, the big debate. Right, while I was watching it, I was thinking about bowling, right? When I was a kid, I was a bowler. A little bit. I used to bowl. Right? I had my own ball. I had my own ball with the fingers in it, you know? Because you used to, because if you go to the alley, at least in New York, if you go to the alley, you have to use the, you have to use the house ball. And the fingers don't fit right, right? You're using someone else's fucking ball, right? The fingers. And put your feet in someone else's shoes. That's some stinky ass shoes. I said, I had my own shoes and I had my own ball. No, actually, I used to use the, the shit shoes. That's right. I don't think I ever had my own shoes. I had my own ball. So what does that have to do with a debate? Uh, who is the ball? Right? Who is the ball? Is a ball. Imagine a ball. Imagine a ball rolling down the, rolling down the alley and smashing into ten pins. Right? Yesterday was a ten car pileup. Today is a... Today is... Uh, or last night was... 10 pins going flying. Who caused it? Who's the ball? Is the ball the DNC? Is the ball you and I? The, the, uh, the uh, quote, elector, uh, electorate? <laughs> the people who allegedly vote for these shit sandwiches? Or is it one of the players? I leave that open. I, I, have, a, I, have, the, I have the winner in my head. And I just want to get rid of the losers first. So let's talk about it. So, so there it was, right? We're down in Miami. Marcus Conti reporting. We're down in Miami. The big debate, right? It was more, it was very, it was much more confrontational. A lot of yelling, a lot of arguing. No humor. I think that was the, the thing that, that made it boring. Right? Trump tweeted out, tweet Trump. Trump tweeted out the day before about uh, the one with Elizabeth Warren as the star, you know, the first one, first debate. And he said one word, boring. And he's right. It was, it was boring because no one was taking any risk, right? If you got to wait for de Blasio to take a risk, forget about it, right? So last night, did anybody take a risk? One person did. Was it a, was it a good thing for her? I don't think so. I, I'm talking about Camilla Harris. I'll talk more about that that episode, that that confrontation with 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 racist Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, race playing the race card. So let's get the shit sandwiches out of the way. Eric Eric Swalwell was my number one shit sandwich. There was a guy fucking hey, I'm on the corner of the stage. Hey, he's talking off the corner of the stage. Looks like a cartoon character. <clears throat> Nobody knows who he is. What, what is his policies? I can't remember. Right? Is this just... He was just a... He was just a pick-me guy. So let's get rid of that guy. He ain't gonna be the president. Uh, Michael Bennett, another shit sandwich. Talking about Russia, Russia, Russia. Talking about... not You can't have Medicare for all. Right? Shit sandwich, goodbye. Right? He's out. Michael Bennett. Uh, John Hickenlooper. Anti-socialist. <laughs> he wanted to come in and say... Hey, fucking Bernie, socialist. Right, that was his whole play, right? Who's leading the discussion so far? Let's give you a clue. Who is leading the debate so far without saying a goddamn word? The, 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 the first half hour of the debate was about what? Medicare for all. Whose signature program is that? Who, who came up? Who was screaming off the rooftops in 2016? Medicare for all, and they told him it couldn't, it couldn't work. Now it's the, the topic of discussion in the debate. Right? It's pretty powerful, right? What else are they talking about? They're talking about debt consolidation of loans, um, democratic socialism. Who's leading from behind? Right? Who's in the middle of the stage? Uh, so, so let's just get, I can continue knocking out the shit sandwiches. <laughs> Marianne Williamson. Oh my God! <laughs> Anybody could be president. Um, that was. Um, some people would view it as enlightening, like refresh, refreshing, that it was such an outside opinion. But I saw her as kind of d delusional and deranged, and 
not didn't have a certainly didn't have a vision for the country. She's not there to be the president of the United States. She's there for some other reason. So why are you wasting our time? Why are you wasting our time? Get off the stage. Get off the stage. I know Oprah loves you and all that shit. Go talk to Oprah. <laughs> so that's number four. Right? Her, her big thing was reparation. Reparation. <laughs> Dogs love me. Reparation. Ah, oh, the kids give the money to the slaves. Slaves! Give them, give them the money. That was her thing. Black issues, right? She's a white woman, right? Isn't she white? I don't know. I was weird. She was just weird. She gave me that feeling like I had to... I, ugh, I had to walk away for a second, right? There's a lot of walking away moments last night. A lot of moments like I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe... Um, you know, when you watch, looking at the clock, they say, oh my God, I got to fucking watch this shit for another hour? Oh my God, this is horrible. But this is the DNC doing, right? They wanted they wanted 10 people on stage. Oh no, we're a democracy. Everybody has a chance. Everybody should be heard. But the idea is that... that Dilution of the float is what I was talking about initially. If you put a lot of, now you see it play out. You have a lot of voices, two nights, right? You can't, if you don't know, if you don't know, you, you, you would think that all of these candidates are for Medicare for All from the beginning, right? They started, you know, years ago. They were all for it, right? But, but what you don't realize is that there was one candidate leading that, leading that charge. So the dilution of the float, the... The bowling ball could be the DNC smashing the pins. But the DNC is, is notoriously uh, corrupt and inaccurate in their judgment. They could be played. So, so that's uh, Marianne Williamson. Bye-bye. And the, one of the biggest disappointments, I knew he would be, is Pete, uh, Pete Buttigieg. Boo, Pete Buttigieg. Right, Pete. Right, Mayor P from Indiana got his ass handed to him. Right, he turns out to be a talking, uh, a talking point guy. Guy that's if he if he goes off script, he's lost. When pushed on a couple of issues, I don't know, some kind of gun, some kind of kid got shot or something. I don't know what the issue was, but he basically looked into the camera and said, "I couldn't fix it. I, there's nothing I could do about it." Right, it just his articulation went down the drain. Right, his his. His savvy, he's very, I, I don't know, he almost seemed like, like monotone in a, in a kind of a New York gay way, you know, like, 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 uh, let's talk about being homosexual. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's, that's cool. At least you would have distinguished yourself by saying, by the way, I'm the only homosexual on the stage. Known homosexual. That, that would have been funny. No humor. There was no humor. It was so dry. It was like, I was, I, and the biggest disappointment, I'll tell you, in terms of humor was Andrew Yang. Fucking Andrew Yang, man, is a funny guy, right? He's like, I saw his, I watched a couple of his rallies. I didn't see it live because it was raining that day. <laughs> I didn't go to Andrew Yang's rally in New York because it was raining. I fucking stand out in the rain. But he's funny. And he wasn't funny last night. He was, he was Mr. Math. The, you know, be funny. Say that, that line. The line is like, I wanted to be next to, I wanted him to put me next to Joe Biden because I wanted people to say, who's that Asian guy standing next to Joe Biden? <laughs> That's funny, right? But his, his, his big issue, I, I'm going a little out of sync because I don't have him down as a, as a total flop. Uh, Yang, but we'll talk about it. Yang's big thing is give everybody a thousand dollars. Everybody over the eighteen, over eighteen, give them a thousand dollars a month and stimulate the economy from the bottom down. I said that's a crazy idea. That's that's nuts. How does that work? Who's going to pay for it, right? But it's it's actually a very very brilliant idea, and not a, a an original idea, right? Because when you're trying to stimulate the banks from the top down, it doesn't work. We know that. But when you stimulate it the other way, when you when you actually um, stimulus programs, right? It, it it can have a a positive effect. You can make a case that that would be a good thing for American citizens. 
but he didn't he didn't get that message out. You gotta say, oh, wait a second. Thousand dollars each. Thousand dollars each every month from me, the Asian guy. <laughs> say something like that. He didn't uh, so Yang wasn't able to I know Yang Yang is strong he's a lot he's got a lot of support, but he wasn't able to he wasn't able to take his his three minutes of fame and make himself famous. Uh, Bernie Sanders has the luxury of not having to do that. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't have to do that because everybody knows who these people are. Camilla Harris is well, she does have to do it, and she she took a, she took she took her um, she took a stab, but she she in my view, and I'll talk about her at length. I I see her more as she played the race card, and I just. I recoil from that when I see it. I'm like, oh God, here we go. Here's the black woman gonna tell you about blackness and how being black in America is so fucked up and and it's a fucking we need all help us and blacks and how dare you talk about the blacks like that? You're fucking black. <laughs> I'm tired of this shit, man. Obama didn't win because he 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 had, he separated himself from whites as a black man. Obama won because he stuck with the with the the issues that affected the the American people, and he connected, although it turned out to be all lies, or at least half truths and and under undeliverable promises. He was able to connect as a black, the first black president, <laughs> first black man running for president, legitimate, and won. Right, not because he was the. I mean, to some, he he won because he was the first black. He was black. Right, blacks voted for the first black president. Right? They didn't give a shit what other, anything else that happened. Right, that's the truth. Right, you want the truth about black? You know, blacks who voted for Obama. They voted for him for the color of his skin. That's racist, right? Or is it? Is it just? I like that guy. He he reminds me of me, because I'm black. <laughs> so. So the black issue, black and black and white, was on display um, a lot, and and we'll, we'll talk more. So another shit sandwich, num the sixth one. We're getting just knocking them out, right? Kristen Gillibrand. Now, she said something so ridiculous. She said she wanted to make gun guns the, the her big thing, right? The greed of the NRA is the gun problem, right? She wants she also wants a buy-in for Medicare. That's strike two, right? Uh, create competition among insurers. Now, Kristen, Kristen Gillibrand, I know because she's a senator from New York, and she's a total all foam, no beer. All foam, no beer, Kristen Gillibrand. Takes money from all the big corporations, big pharma, right? Her daddy was involved with the Nexus sex cult. <laughs> I had to throw that one in there. Maybe. We don't know. Um, she is totally a total for sale. She took Hillary Clinton's seat. It was handed to her in exchange for doing exactly what they told her to do. She's a Hillary Clinton troll. And she spoke out of turn. She just she just she just was gonna go for broke and it it flopped. For for de Blasio the other night it worked. But for her, she doesn't have the skill or the or the character. She just kept talking in the monotone. There's a conversation going on over here, and Chris Gillibrand is talking over there about I don't know what, just talking into the microphone. Shut up! <laughs> I don't like her, man. I, I just, it's 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 repulsive. She has, she's smart on corruption and politics, but she is the corruption, right? She wants to get rid of the corruption, but she is the corruption. People like her are the, cor are the corruption. They say, oh, yeah, yeah, we got to get rid of the corruption, when they are the corruption, right? You lead the opposition by, you, you, you control the opposition by leading it. That's Kirsten Gillibrand. Vote for me and nothing will change. I'll lead the, the opposition right into a ditch, Kirsten Gillibrand. So she's out off the fucking table, right? And Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, uh, I already said it, but he's, he, he was, he's funny, right? And, and, and charismatic and smart, you know, 
you know, he's he's unique. Not because he's an Asian guy, but he's unique because his his view is that of a business person who has this innovative idea of stimulus. It's a big idea, stimulus from the from the bottom down, but he wasn't able to separate himself. And if anybody that's on the Yang team watches this, he has to lean into his humor. Because all somebody had to do was crack an Asian joke on that stage. Or crack a, you know, you know, like a uh, a moment like like when Trump, everybody's arguing on stage. He's like, look how much fun we're having tonight. Well, he's fucking having a good time, right? Right? Some some kind of breaker. If you're an unknown, that could have worked for him, but it did. He failed, right? You only get one shot. You know, you get your your moment of fame, and that's just the way it is. I know it's tense, right? And and you you know you warm up to it as things go on. But you got to come out swinging, like you got you got to get out of your head. You know, all those people are prepping you about what you're supposed to say in the in the debate. Take the script, throw it in the fucking garbage on the way out. Fire all those guys. Just come and talk off the top of your head. Right? You know the facts. You, you've been in your rallies. Just treat it like it's a rally. A lot of bugs. <laughs> treat it like it's a rally. Be funny. So that's that was Andrew Yang, still a contender. I'd still like to see him prevail into maybe a top the top six because he's unique he has that unique char- that unique um, uh, idea All right so so it brings us to to the the, the, the top three which was Camilla Harris Joe Biden <coughs> and the one Bernie Sanders <coughs> A lot of pollen in the air. You saw that dog before try to attack me? <laughs> it's like dogs have a sense. Like, this guy's crazy. Why is he talking to himself? Something's not right about this guy. <laughs> Something's not right about this guy. <laughs> the dog's, it's another dog looking at me barking. Ah, it's just, again, it's hot in New York, man. Shit goes to your head. Shit goes to your head, man. The heat. Woo! I don't like the heat. See the ocean? You see where I am? Arizona Bridge. That's the um, that's the bike path over there. I, I sometimes walk over there, but notice the notice I'm in the shade, and there's the sun. That's the Bell Parkway right there. Busy street too, right? It's the thing about New York. You could be in a quiet park, and then. And they build a they build a highway right through your right through your peace of mind, you know. You don't see that on this angle, right? But right there is all the cars. So, so let's go, Joe Biden. Total blunder, <laughs> floundering, getting attacked from the left to right. Camilla Harris laid into the brother. Oh. It was wonderful. Camilla Harris, the prosecutor, didn't put a glove on Bernie Sanders, <clears throat> but uh, pretty much eliminated to eliminated Joe Biden. You know why? Because Joe Biden is running on the ticket of Obama. That if you're black, you're for me. See Obama, Obama, black, me, pick me. I was Obama's. I was Obama's guy. Pick me. So. Camilla Harris is going like, fuck that shit, I'm black. I'm the black. I'm the black on the stage. What's this fucking Joe Biden guy? Give me the fucking blacks. Oh, blacks. Come Camilla Harris, vote for me. That was her strategy. Did it work? I mean, it, 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 to me, it's repulsive. And it won't win. Because, again, what I said earlier, Obama was not a black candidate. Obama was a smart, articulate progressive who happened to be, be be black. Did he ultimately lie about it? I don't know if he lied, but he wasn't able to deliver. Whereas Camilla Harris is just running straight on a black ticket. Her her calculation is if I can win the blacks. Now it might be is that a racist thing? Is that is that an opinionated male white thing? No, it's just it is a it's an observation, and it I think it's an accurate observation. 
that she she's attacking this this sensitive issue of of race on the public you know on the on the uh, national stage attacking Joe Biden so Joe Biden folded right and and Kamala Harris to some was elevated by that that exchange over busing blacks that that Biden you know in in the 70s and 90s who knows when she pushed Biden on this black issue and Biden folded like a like a rug like he folded like a chair uh, he has he's nothing he's I told you he's a he's gonna flop in the numbers he didn't look like he even wants he doesn't want to be president he's got this, this fucking all this work on his face he's a 77 year old man with a with a with a pulled back plastic surgery face and and his fucking falsy fake teeth and he just looks like a big big con artist phony in his in his final in his final words he has no he has nothing he has no policy he stands on 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 the heart and soul of America we're gonna make the soul of I'm f- <clears throat> we're fighting for the soul of America that's right? so Biden is um, unfortunately he's gonna keep getting pushed uh, by the media because he's the corporate choice and you I think that you now of that of the of those ten bowling balls bowling pins Camilla Harris gets elevated because she she attacked the corporate front runner and she did it well to to for a, for a nice slice of America and to others she, she she's repulsive can she is that a move towards the presidency is what I'm saying is no it's it's a it's a it's a rabbit hole you're putting yourself in the black hole. <laughs> right? There's a there's a black hole, there's a white hole, and then there's the everybody hole. You want to get into the everybody hole because the black and the white hole empty out into the everybody hole in the end. But you stuck yourself in the black hole. So Camilla Harris is stuck down the black hole. Joe Biden has 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 nothing. Universal health care, no College tuition at city and state universities? No. You know, oh, energy, Green New Deal. Yeah, but he has no, he has no idea, no conception of how to how to pull it off. Right? Nothing. He's he's a no, he's a nobody. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about the winner. Why is Bernie Sanders the winner? All right. What was his what, what what was his performance? Did he push Joe Biden? A little bit. He pushed him once on Iraq. Joe Joe Biden was saying. You know, uh, uh, he was he was talking about how the U.S. defended itself or something, and 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 his vote for Iraq to to start a war in Iraq. And Sanders basically told him, "I led the opposition to that against you." Who's right? right? So, but but again, Sanders doesn't have to do that. Why did Sanders win? It's because of what I told you right away. Who set the tone? Not the not the emotional volume kind of tone. That's not the tone I'm talking about. But who set the the, the stage for the questions? Medicare for all. Ah, college tuition at city and state universities free. A democratic socialist idea for America. That's all Bernie Sanders. The people that are turning away from Sanders saying you didn't do anything. He let you down. Is leading the fucking. He's leading the the debate from behind. They have to. They have to address it. Why? Because seventy percent of the country wants it. He's winning. Sanders is winning, despite the fact that he's being crowded out. If you view it from that perspective, that who is setting the tone, who is his is dictating the questions. It's Bernie Sanders. Right. Now, in terms of his performance, he wasn't funny. He was uptight. Um, he was. He has the luxury of being funny, and he should have. He should have went there. He should. Have, he didn't smile. He should have been like, "Oh, this is fun. We're having a good time." Pull a Trump. Pull a Trump, Bernie. Just look at the. You know, you're up on the stage. 
It's crowded up here. <laughs> Whoa, it's so crowded up here. I'm used to being by myself. Me and Hillary. I make a joke. I, I'll be a joke writer. Cut, talk to me. I know how to fucking make people laugh, right? I'll, I'll help you out, Bernie, man. Just look me up, man. It's fucking, you know what I'm saying, man? I, I'll do it for, you know, put a couple of dollars in my PayPal and I'll write you jokes. Bernie, come on, man. Help a brother out. So, so that, that, that's a problem. How do you, I, I, I just, they all want to be so, so, so up front. All right, so, and, and, and nobody was, nobody was funny, and then it becomes a hard thing to watch. It becomes very tense, very, very uptight. It's like, hey, listen, you know, it's fucking TV, man. It's, it's internet, and it's 11 o'clock. I got, I, I got some sleeping to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather be sleeping than watching you guys fucking shit on each other. <laughs> make me, at least make me laugh, right? At least make me, inspire me that, that one of you idiots is going to win. So, so, so there you have it, right? It was, a, it was a, a, a bit of a ruckus, a bowling ball. So I would say that the bowling ball is Bernie Sanders. What do you think? The bowling ball is Bernie Sanders because he's the one coming in there shaking it up. Whether they like it or not. Right? And on the other side, you had, you know, the, I, I, I had an afterthought about Elizabeth Warren from the night before. Is that there was a um, a fake poll put out that had Elizabeth Warren 20 points ahead of everybody right before the debate? Right? <laughs> so you can't you can't question it, right? It was under Google when you Googled. I Googled something and I saw this fake poll about Elizabeth Warren and and Nate Silver from 538 is plugging it. Oh yeah, fucking oh, it was the newest poll. Elizabeth Warren from out of nowhere. <laughs> There's such, there's such thieves and such scumbags and such um, corrupt people. Don't, don't discount that. Tom Perez sitting in the front row in the DNC. He's the, 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 the chairman, right? It's the evil people, right? They're gonna, they're not, they're, you know, they're not, they're not legitimate. So Bernie Sanders, Sir Bernie Sanders, uh, comes out of it with no gaffes, unscathed, nothing. Just blew it, you know. He didn't. He didn't lose anything, but he also, he didn't gain. That's the point. He didn't, he didn't have the ability to rise above, right? That's what Joe Biden tried to do, but Joe Biden doesn't have the, the, the credentials. He doesn't have the, 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 the Bernie Sanders 40 year track record of fighting for people. And, and Joe Biden tried to take the high road and it failed. That was Bernie Sanders' place to be. <laughs> you know, looking, it was like, oh, let's, why are we all fighting? Well, aren't we having a good time? That was Bernie Sanders' place to be. He didn't take it, but he still doesn't lose because he's Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I know that sounds arrogant and sounds maybe opinionated and, and like, oh, you're in the pocket for Bernie. But that's the truth, right? Sometimes you don't have to, he doesn't have to work his way up. He has to not. He has to not get knocked down. So that's my two cents on it. What's your opinion of, of this? We'll see what's going for. You know, going forward, maybe they'll, maybe they'll thin the pack a little bit. That'll be, you know, of course, more interesting. Marcus Conte reporting.